Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And you know what? Next week starts the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course, which um, we only, we do this three times a year, but we only do it with the celebrity instructors once every two or three years. So if you would like to take this course with instructors like Neil Barnard and Alan Goldhammer, and Dr. Esselstyn, and Dr. Ralph Moss, and Dr. Mark Schultz, and a lot of other amazing, great people in our business, Dr. Anthony Lim, Dr. Peter Bregan, uh, this is the time to take it. So it starts next Wednesday, this is Thursday, and uh, you should email me at pampopper at msn.com if you're going to do that. Um, another thing is um, the thyroid course um, is, um, uh, to, is on uh, May 29th, and so it's already happened, but we taped it. So if you wanted to take the thyroid course and you missed it, no problem, you can sign up to see the video version of it. And um, you're in time to sign up for the polycystic ovary syndrome course, PCOS, which is on Tuesday, June 4th. So uh, keep those things in mind too. And one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, some of you are aware of my advanced study program where every month I select a book which I think people would be interested in learning about and probably won't read on their own. And we do a couple of discussion groups and I then videotape the um, uh, the workshops and put them on a video platform. Well, anyway, I chose for June the medical medium. A lot of people are asking questions about that book, and and so I think the best way to answer them is to just I'm going to go through the book and make a couple of slide sets, and we'll talk about what the medical medium says and see if there's any validity to it. We've done this with a lot of books. In other words, I don't just in, you know choose books that. Um, um, reinforce my point of view about something or what we teach here. Sometimes I pick pretty contrarian stuff that we look into and it's pretty interesting actually. So uh, if you'd like to learn about the book written by the medical medium, um, I think the first class is June 11th and the second one is two, two weeks later. So we have a lot of things coming up here. Um, you guys really do send a lot of uh, um, responses back on the video clips and I really appreciate that. It often gives me ideas about other things to write about. Um, one thing I heard a lot about, a lot of you even sent me personal emails at my uh, email account, uh, pampopper at msn.com, about the uh, clip that I did on pets where people who were depressed and out of shape and that sort of thing adopted pets and everybody lived happily ever after, the pets thrived and the humans thrived. and I really I really do think that there is a lot to the healing properties of animals um, and animal companionship and uh, I actually did a workshop on that under the Things You Should Know series a couple years ago called Healing Power of Pets and I was hoping uh, that I would be able to find evidence to support the things that I've been saying all along which is I think people are happier when they have pets. I know I'm pretty happy uh, with my cat Schroeder who's been my companion for almost 15 years now. Uh, but I found an enormous amount of evidence and one thing that I found that was really interesting is a couple of farms in California that allow children who have behavioral problems to come and visit and these kids actually get better just during the afternoon that they're at the farm with the animals so there is really something to this animal companionship thing and I had this idea based on some of your emails what if we took the homeless pets and there are God knows so many of them cats and dogs and we paired them with the people who had depression anxiety and psychosis and um, the pets would have a home and the people who have psychological issues would get better and everybody would live happily ever after. Now wouldn't that be a great charity to start where we match people who uh, would benefit from having a fuzzy companion. So just a thought I'll put out there. I know there are some um, uh, organizations that promote that type of thing but I'd like to see it get a little more aggressive. All right, so the topic for today I want to talk about type 2 diabetes and the reason I want to talk about it is because there are so many misunderstandings about type 2 diabetes and you might think well what the heck is there to um, misunderstand about type 2 diabetes? 88% of people are overweight, that's a risk factor and type 2 diabetes means that you're insulin resistant and you eventually take metformin and maybe even have to take supplemental insulin. Well, the part that there are so many misunderstandings about is what to eat if you're diabetic. And unfortunately, the American Diabetes Association, which I'm sure a lot of very well-meaning people work there who want to help diabetics, but unfortunately they are promoting a diet that is unlike the diet that is consumed by people all over the world who don't get diabetes, which I find just infinitely fascinating and aggravating. 
Part of it is because the sponsors of these nonprofit organizations that cater to disease groups are usually pharmaceutical companies and food companies. I remember going to the ADA's website one time and the health tip of the day was sponsored by Eskimo Pie for 18 months. I have a picture of it I saved on my server. And I'm just wondering, why is that? Because people need to know that Eskimo pies are good for you. I mean, what possible benefit could a relationship like that have? So anyway, lots of misunderstandings about type 2 diabetes, and a lot of people still think that eating fruit or sugar or starch is what gives you diabetes, and that's simply not true. Um, so I started looking into this, and I'll tell you why in just a second, but um, animal foods and fat are the primary cause of type 2 diabetes. And I have a lot of studies here and I, have, I teach a whole course in this, by the way. I'm teaching a course on diabetes that starts in a few weeks that you might want to take, a four-week course. But um, saturated fat in animal foods has a negative effect on glucose tolerance and increases insulin resistance due to decreased beta cell sensitivity and function. In other words, the more saturated fat you eat, the less um, insulin your body produces. Something else I'll tell you about all fat is that when you eat fat, fat gets stored on your body, you can see it, it also gets inside your cells. We call it intramyocellular fat. And the, that fat gums up the machinery of your cells and makes you insulin resistant. And that's one of the reasons why you see these studies where people adopt a low fat plant-based diet, and I'll tell you about a couple of them in a minute here. The fat comes pouring out of their cells and the insulin resistance goes away and the cells become more insulin sensitive. So um, saturated fat is a problem. Increased intake of saturated fat is associated independent, independently with higher fasting insulin concentration. In one study, a 16-week low-fat plant-based diet was shown to improve insulin resistance and beta cell function in overweight people. In other words, you get the fat out of the cells and you promote more insulin production by the beta cells of the pancreas. People who eat a plant-based diet have a 50% lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes. That's a pretty huge reduction. A study in which 18 overweight adults were randomized to eat muffins enriched with resistant starch or regular muffins for six weeks showed that eating resistant starch improved glucose regulation and resulted in changes in hormone levels associated with satiety. Now, people think starch is bad for you. Resistant starch is in foods like grains, seeds, legumes, and potatoes and has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity, lower blood glucose levels, and reduce appetite. So people come here and they're flabbergasted and they'll say things like, you can eat potatoes when you're diabetic or if you don't want to become diabetic. Even white potatoes, any kind of potatoes will do. Potatoes are actually health promoting when you want to avoid diabetes or you want to get rid of type 2 diabetes. Polyphenols in plant foods have been shown to have a glucose lowering effect similar to the pharmaceutical drugs that are commonly prescribed to type 2 diabetics. And I found one study that showed that eating more raspberries, oh my gosh, you can eat fruit and avoid diabetes, improves glucose control and lowers insulin levels in people who are pre-diabetic. In fact, for people who are told all the time, fruit is bad for you, you can eat too much fruit, fruit is bad for diabetics, diabetics shouldn't eat fruit. I have never had anybody in this office who is sick from fruit eating. I sure have had a lot of people who have joined Wellness Forum who have been sick from eating too much protein and fat, and that's what we're talking about here. A recent study, and this is the one that spurred me to do research to, that, um, well, some of these I already had archived on my server, but I also found a whole bunch of other ones, new ones, that I hadn't looked at yet. Um, this study was co-authored by Hannah Kiliova, she's a medical doctor and clinical research director at Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And I'm on the president's board for PCRM, so I get notifications, of course, about all the research that they're doing. And what she and her colleagues did was look at the effect of a vegan diet a vegan meal, I should say, versus a meat-based meal on gastrointestinal hormones and satiety in men with type 2 diabetes, obese men, and healthy men. The men fasted for 10 to 12 hours overnight, and the diabetic men were told to skip their diabetes medications the night before and the morning of um, the experiment. The men were then randomly assigned to eat either a tofu burger or a meat and cheese burger, and then they were crossed over to switch meals on a second morning. So there were actually two mornings they showed up to do this. Calorie density and macronutrient quality of the food, composition of the food, was the same in both meals, both the tofu burger and the meat and cheese burger. Measurements were taken at the beginning and then at 30, 60, 120, and 80 minutes after eating the meals. Surprisingly, men in all three groups who ate the tofu burger reported greater satiety. 
and that's one thing. People think that eating more of a plant-based diet, you won't feel full and that sort of thing. Actually, you get great satiety from eating plant foods. And then in all three groups, you had the tofu burger showed increased production of hormones produced by the gut microbiome that are factors in glucose metabolism, insulin secretion, energy homeostasis, satiety, and weight management. So when you eat the right foods, you end up with better production from the gut of, of all kinds of signaling um, uh, molecules and neurotransmitters and, and uh, hormones that lead to better health. So here's the bottom line, and this particular research article has 13 references to support it. People who want to prevent or reverse diabetes should eat a low-fat, low-protein, high-carbohydrate diet. And a high carbohydrate diet is actually more effective for lowering fasting glucose and A1C levels and increasing insulin sensitivity than a higher protein diet. Protein rich foods cause higher insulin responses than high carbohydrate foods. Many studies show that diabetics lose more weight, they have improvements in A1C levels, and they're able to significantly reduce and even eliminate diabetic medications after only a few weeks of eating a low fat plant based diet. Starch, fruit, and sugar do not cause diabetes, fat and protein do. And one study that I refer to a lot, and it's an old one, and people say, Pam, you're always talking about older studies. The, when the study was conducted, it does not determine its value or the quality of the study. It's the study itself. And one study, this was done by Dr. James Anderson, it was done back in the 1980s. He took 25 type 1 and 25 type 2 diabetics, put them on a low-fat plant-based diet, and within three weeks, the type 1 diabetics had reduced their insulin needs by 40% and their cholesterol was reduced by 30%. Both of those things are important. The more insulin you're taking, the shorter your life is going to be and the more likely you're going to go blind, have a stroke, lose body parts like toes and feet and that sort of thing. Um, in fact, there are more amputations, lower limb amputations, performed on diabetics than there are performed on uh, war vets, if that gives you an idea of how serious this is. And the cholesterol lowering in these type 1 diabetics is important because most diabetics die of cardiovascular disease. So that's what happened to the type 1s. The type 2s were also insulin dependent and 24 out of 25 were off of their insulin medications in 3 weeks, 21 days. It's pretty impressive. It's one study, but there are plenty more that show the same thing. I've cited some of them here. And so the bottom line is if you're worried about diabetes or you have it, avoiding fruit and starch is not the answer. Avoiding meat and cheese and dairy and animal foods and fat, that is the answer to your diabetic problem. All right, as usual, hit the subscribe button. Uh, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you next week with more news.